thank you very much, Brett. And thanks everyone for inviting me and for being here in the meeting today. And I apologize, I'm going to another meeting, but happy to be here. Um, so I'm a medical oncologist at Dana-Farber and have been collaborating with Brett and Peggy, Michael, and many others in the group for a number of years now. And it's always nice, it's always an honor to be able to share with you what we are doing for uh, breast cancer in men. Uh, and today I wanted to share with you some exciting news about the clinical trial that we have for endocrine therapy in men with breast cancer. So as you know, tamoxifen is the standard endocrine therapy option for men with breast cancer, and it's the main and very likely the only option that is being used in the adjuvant setting for most patients um, yeah, who are being treated for this disease. And part of the reason of that is that the efficacy of other endocrine therapy options is unknown, specifically the efficacy of aromatase inhibitors, which we call AI, um, also the efficacy of aromatase inhibitors with gonadal suppression. And more recently, uh, there has been the development of CDK4-6 inhibitors, uh, medications like abemaciclib, ribocyclib, and those medications have been shown to be beneficial in women with breast cancer, and it's not totally clear how beneficial they may be for men um, who have the treatment, who are going for the treatment of this disease. So if we can move on to the next slide. So the challenges that we have is that we're stuck with tamoxifen and the field is moving forward and we have had multiple improvements in the treatment for our patients, uh, for women with breast cancer that have increased cure rates and we have not translated those improvements in men uh, because we continue to use the same endocrine therapy agents. So um, we designed the Ethan clinical trial with the following questions in mind. So do aromatase inhibitors work in men? This is a question that is really long lasting and that we have to answer. If AIs work in men, do AIs with gonadal suppression work better than tamoxifen? We do know that in premenopausal women, when we use aromatase inhibitors with gonadal suppression, they actually work better than tamoxifen and it has also replaced the standard of care in younger women. Then the next question is, should we add CK46 inhibitors to increase the efficacy? And if we do that, what should be, what should be the best medication we should use in combination with a CK46 inhibitor for the treatment of men? So we know the answer to all of these questions for women, but we don't for men with breast cancer. And it's really problematic when we see patients in clinic. And patients often feel disappointed to know how little we know about this and to help them make decisions about what the best treatment would be for them. If we go to the next slide. So this is the scheme of the clinical trial. And it's a complex design, but bear with me, I'll, I'll explain what, what we're doing. So this is a trial that is enrolling men with stage one to three breast cancer. So anyone who doesn't have metastatic breast cancer can participate. They have to have a tumor that would be positive for estrogen and, and or progesterone receptor. So hormone receptor positive breast cancer and a tumor that is uh, negative for HER2, which actually happens to be essentially 90% of men with breast cancer, those who have this type of breast cancers. So those patients can enroll and when they do, we uh, offer them randomization to one of three arms, which uh, are unblinded, meaning that patients will know which arm they're assigned to. So the first arm, which is arm A, is tamoxifen, which is the standard of care and is the control arm today. The second arm is arm B, which is uh, an astrosol, uh, an aromatase inhibitor. And the third arm is an astrosol with the garlics. And the goal here is to check a marker called KI67 over a three week period of time. So we take the biopsy that patients underwent for their diagnosis. 
when they were diagnosed with breast cancer, we take that biopsy and we measure the KI67, which is a protein that is a marker for proliferation. Then at the end of the three weeks window, at the end of the three weeks treatment, either on arm A, B, or C, we do a new biopsy of the tumor and we measure the KI67 again. So what we know in women from multiple studies is that tamoxifen in general leads to a 50% reduction in KI67 in women. And aromatase inhibitors do slightly higher than that, but quite similar to 50% reduction. And aromatase inhibitors with gonadal suppression, which would be arm C on the trial, would lead essentially to an 80% reduction if they work better than tamoxifen. So we're trying to confirm this with this clinical trial. And if we do, if we are able to do that, then we will confirm that this would be treatment options that could be used in men um, and would offer alternatives to tamoxifen, particularly for men who may have side effects from tamoxifen. At the end of the three weeks and after the biopsy, patients get randomized again. And so the group of patients in arm A gets randomized one-to-one -to, -one to go on tamoxifen again, so continuing tamoxifen, which is the control arm during the entire trial. And the other half of patients gets randomized to be treated with tamoxifen and abemaciclib, which is a CK46 inhibitor. Now, arms B and C are merged and then randomized to anastrozole and the garlics, which is the gonadal suppression option alone, or the same with abemaciclib. And the goal here is to try to understand what will be the best partner for us to use when we think about adding CK46 inhibitors in men, and also to try to understand how much value do CK46 inhibitors add to the endocrine therapy treatment um, as a whole. So patients are treated for four months with this with this with one of these options, and then they go they go for surgery at the end of the four months. And what we measure at the end of the four months in the surgical specimen is something called RCV index. RCV index stands for residual cancer burden index. And what that is, is basically a measurement of how much tumor is left in the surgical, in the surgical specimen. So the tumor will be present at the starting of the treatment, of course, and the treatment will make the cancer shrink down in size as patients receive the treatment during time. And at the end of the four months will be when the tumor will be the smallest. It will have shrink the most after the endocrine therapy. So then we go in and measure how much cancer is left. What is this, essentially the amount of cancer that is left at the time of surgery in the surgical specimen. And that gives us a sense of activity of the treatments. Uh, if we move on to the next slide. So there are two objectives on this on this clinical trial, which are trying to answer different questions. The first objective is the KI67 reduction, which is trying to answer the question as to whether aromatase inhibitors alone work or not, and whether combining aromatase inhibitors with gonadal suppression would work, would work better than tamoxifen. The second primary objective is the, the objective of the RCB index, and that one is trying to answer a different question, which is, do, uh, does adding a CDK46 inhibitor, such as apemaciclib in this case, increase the efficacy of endocrine therapy? And what endocrine therapy option should we use to combine it with apemaciclib? Should we stick to tamoxifen or should we do an aromatase inhibitor with an suppression instead, which is what we are using most commonly in women? The trial will also look at other secondary endpoints that include estradiol and testosterone levels to try to understand the changes that happen with those hormones in men as a consequence of the, of the treatment with tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, and aromatase inhibitors with gonadal suppression. We will look at a objective that is called PEPI score, which is a, is a similar, but it's an alternative way of measuring the amount of cancer that is left. So it's an alternative to the RCV index. And we will look at side effects. Um, so the safety, the feasibility, and we will also look at patient reported outcomes during the study to, to get a better sense as to how these treatments affect men 
with side effects that would be unique to men and may not would not be captured in the female population when these drugs were developed. Next slide. So I'm happy to announce that the trial is finally open at Dana-Farber uh, as of two weeks ago. This is a process that has taken years, uh, literally, to get it started, but we're finally there. And in fact, we actually have a patient that is in the, in the process of consenting uh, to the trial and hopefully starting the trial on Monday. So we're very excited. Uh, that will be our first patient and we're, we're hoping to enroll a total of 60 men. We are also in the process of opening the trial at eight other sites around the country. I listed there six, uh, but we're also hopefully going to count with Georgetown and hopefully with uh, UCSF as well. Um, we are, uh, those are in, in various stages, but those sites will open the trial and will be an option to offer the trial for men who would live closer to those locations, of course. Uh, and this is super exciting to us. Um, so if you know of any man who has a new diagnosis of breast cancer, who has not undergone surgery yet, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing this information with them now that the trial is open, that would help us a lot to enroll faster. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, Pei has my contact information so um, uh, she can uh, help us communicate with each other. And or you can feel free to reach out to me directly, um, and we are happy to to accommodate patients, of course, and we'll be happy to to help. Next slide. So this is a huge team effort, and I want to thank a lot of people who have helped us be able to move forward with this. Uh, the study team is listed on the left hand side. These are wonderful collaborators and mentors who have helped me uh, move the study along uh, within a, a coalition called TBCRC, which is the Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium. I also want to thank Male Breast Cancer Happens and in particular, Michael Singer, who has been the lead advocate for our trial and has helped us with uh, letters of support for grant funding, uh, Peg Miller and Brett Miller, who have always been receptive of the study and have always been very enthusiastic. Really, the whole male breast cancer happens group. And last but not least, the funding uh, that we were able to secure, thanks in huge part to Mike Singer uh, support, uh, uh, which, which is from BCRF and from ASCO. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. And thank you very much for listening today. Hi, doctor. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, first, th thank you for this research. It's uh, um, it's fantastic. I'm excited to see what the results will be. Um, so the question is, uh, hypothetically, if you were a patient, having only the data we have up to today, which uh, endocrine therapy would you choose for yourself and why? Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're excited about this. I share the excitement. And uh, that is a very good question, actually. And we struggle a lot with that question in clinic. Personally, when when I meet with patients, what I share with them is that if I was the patient, I would I would I would go with tamoxifen until we have the results from this study. Certainly, this study will give us more information about other options, but uh, the study is also built in a way that if those options do not work as well as tamoxifen does, we will find out quickly. So we're only exposing patients to a three-week window of treatment. And the marker that we're measuring will allow us to find out whether the drugs don't work, for example. Because one of the concerns of using aromatase inhibitors alone is that they may not work as effectively as tamoxifen. We do know that they do work in postmenopausal women, in fact, better than tamoxifen but we don't know so much in men. So outside of the clinical trial, it is a risk to that we take if we were to, to do aromatase inhibitors uh, for, for five years, for example, which is the timeline that most men will need it. And on the other hand, though, we do have several reports from, from case reports and case series that have looked at the efficacy of 
aromatase inhibitors in men, including in men in the metastatic setting, showing that they do work. Um, tumors do shrink down when they are treated with aromatase inhibitors uh, in men. So it is very likely that do they work better than tamoxifen? Because if they work less well than tamoxifen, then we should stick with tamoxifen. So that, that is what the trial will hopefully help answer. And until we have information from then, which hopefully will be three years from now, uh, assuming we enroll well, until then, we should continue um, using tamoxifen. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Hi, Dr. Leone. It's uh, Michael Singer. Congratulations on the trial opening uh, this week. Uh, look forward to, uh, you know, the study results. Uh, question. If you're on tamoxifen and you want to switch uh, to another AI, what would the process be? Do you have to wait or do you switch right away? How would that work? Thank you, Michael. And thank you for all the support. It's It's been uh, amazing to count with your help with this, and we wouldn't been, have been able to do it without you. Um, so is your question in the trial specifically, or is it in clinic in general? Uh, I'll make it clinic in general. Okay. So if you want to switch from tamoxifen to an AI in clinic, you can do the switch automatically. Um, usually, though, if you are thinking about doing a switch like that, we usually tend to recommend that we use an aromatase inhibitor together with gonadal suppression. So a medication like Lupron, for example, or Goserelin, um, or the Garelix, like the one that we're using in the trial, but um, a medication that basically would suppress the levels of testosterone. And the main reason for that is, again, the 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 theoretical concern that aromatase inhibitors may not may not work just as well. Um, but the switch can be done automatically. Now, if the switch is being done because of particular side effects, it's best to wait a little bit for those side effects to improve or to go away in full before making the switch so that we don't create a scenario where the side effects could get worse and then we don't know was it because of the switch or was it that they were going to get worse anyways before they got better. So those are some of the considerations that we think about. Does that help answer the question? Yes, yes. Uh, question two is, um, <laughs> does the lack of um, estrogen or does AI age you in the clinical setting? Does does it age the body? So that is a great question. Um, in general, AIs have a side effect in women that it creates a postmenopausal state that is more intense than the natural postmenopausal state because estrogen goes lower in women, even in postmenopausal women. And that can lead to side effects that uh, can include, for example, thinning of the skin, skin dryness, uh, changes that women undergo through menopause when they're going through menopause, osteoporosis, etc., which are changes that we associate with aging uh, because they happen in in after menopause in women. It's not so clear that those side effects are a problem in men. So uh, it's unlikely that it's quite unlikely that men who receive treatment with an aromatase inhibitor alone would develop osteoporosis because they would still have testosterone in circulation and testosterone would counteract those side effects that I was explaining earlier that happen in women. So it should not happen. And in fact, if anything, the testosterone levels would get higher with using an aromatase inhibitor. So it's really... It's really something that could work well if it works just as well as tamoxifen, and it could have, in fact, less side effects than tamoxifen does. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leone. Appreciate it. You're you welcome, Michael. Here. Yes. All right. So, Pablo, if you could send us in an email the actual clinical trial and how the men, uh, you know, need to get with you, 
I will put this up on our Private Brothers page, and then we'll also send it out to the email list of over 600, if you'd like. Yes, absolutely, we'll do. I'll, I'll send you that information. Um, the clinical trial is listed in clinicaltrials.gov, so I can share the link of that as Perfect. well. I'll give you all the information uh, and my contact info as well. That'll be wonderful, so we can get the guys with you. And then if uh, in the you know next, uh, well, we won't be having another session until January, but I'd love you to come on and talk about it in January uh, to answer more of the guys' questions, and you may have more data by then. Would that work out? Yeah, I'd be happy to. That would be great. It's the fourth Thursday of uh, uh, of the month in January. We'll have you on. So that would be wonderful. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, okay. Yes, if you have a Zoom invite link, uh, feel free to send it to me. I I'm will happy do to that. Attend. Yes. I have, uh, I, sorry, doctor, I got one more quick quick one. Uh, if, if the patient was on AI plus gonad suppression for like five years, is that would that cause long-term kind of health problems or what's what's the feasibility of that? Uh, that is a great question. So the option of using AI with gonal suppression for five years, we anticipate that it is likely that will cause similar side effects to those that have been reported in women. So it could potentially cause a risk of osteoporosis uh, for example, similar to women, it could cause uh, things like um, skin dryness, uh, similar to what happens in women. Those would be reversible, though, when those medications are 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 uh, are stopped when the patients finish the five years of treatment. The testosterone would come up again, and then um, it would make the bones stronger again, and um, and the other side effects that are menopausal side effects will go away as well. There is also a risk of um, sexual dysfunction and erectile dysfunction with using gonadal suppression with aromatase inhibitors, particularly because of the gonadal suppression. And that is a side effect that also can happen with tamoxifen alone as well. Okay, great. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks again for having me. We thank you for your time, and we'll talk soon. Appreciate you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks so much, Faye. Uh-huh.